Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we would be continuing on what we already learned in the last lecture. So we started out with the first derivative using the finite differencing and we saw how we can obtain the derivative using a forward, backward and a central difference scheme. So today we would sort of revisit it but using an example and see how they work, how accurate they are. So let's consider a function which is given as f of x of course and let's say it's a quadratic function, a very simple example to start with. And we want to obtain the derivative of this function at x equals to 0. So because this is such a nice function, so we know what the exact derivative is, thanks to Sir Isaac Newton. So we've got 6x plus 5, and we know that the exact answer is that f prime 0 is 5. So we know the exact answer and we want to see how well the finite differences can approximate to these derivative. So we start with the forward difference method. And to give you a sort of quick revision, the forward difference is given as this particular equation on the top. The backward difference is this equation over here. And the central difference is this equation. And we saw that the order of the error for the forward difference method is uh, to the power h and backward difference is the same order of error while for the central difference we get an order of the error to be h square. So we want to see whether the central difference scheme is actually more accurate or not or is it just the hype. So let's see. So if we want to write the f prime 0 or f dash 0, we have to say that it's 0 plus h minus f of 0 divided by h. So let's just say that h is 0 0.2. You can take any value, then it becomes f of 0 0.2 minus f of 0 divided by 0 0.2. And then it becomes f of 0 0.2 comes out to be 8.12. f of 0 is very simply 7 divided by 0 0.12. And that comes out to be 5.6. Quite close, but not exactly there. So let's see what the backward difference say about this derivative. So the backward difference method gives f dash 0 being f of 0 minus plus, I'm sorry, that would be a minus, f of 0 minus 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.2, and f of 0 is 7, f of negative 0 0.2 comes out to be 6.12 divided by 0 0.2, and this comes out to be approximately 4.4. So you can see that the forward difference is swinging on the forward side and the backward difference is swinging on the backward side. And we're hoping that the central difference scheme would give us a closer value to the actual derivative. So if we do that, central differencing method, and there the f dash zero is given as f of zero plus 0 0.2 minus f of zero minus 0 0.2 divided by two times 0 0.2 f of 0 0.2 from the top is 8.12 minus 6.12 divided by 0 0.4. And as you'll find out that this is exactly 5. So from here you can get an idea that uh, this was not just the hype and the central differencing method is actually more accurate than the other two. And we saw that even though it gives the exact answer, but in the world of CFD, it's not always the case. And we always have some errors because we would be dealing with much more complex equations. Finally, on a side note, if you use h equals to 0 0.1, that would give you a forward differencing method, would give you 5.3. The backward difference method would again give you a 5.3 this time. 
And the whole idea of showing this uh, demonstration is that if you reduce the value of h, so in first example the h was 0 0.2, the first order approximation was 5.6, but if you reduce the spacing between the points or in the terms of CFD, if we say that if we increase the mesh size, the order of the error or the deviation from the true value that we should be getting, it reduces as well. That is why during CFD we want to go for a finer grid. Now, this was the story about the first derivative. And as I was mentioning in my last video that uh, not always do we deal with only the first order derivatives. There might be higher order derivatives in the question. So, let's see how we can obtain the higher order derivative approximation using the finite differences. So, go going back to the Taylor series expansion, we saw that f of x0 plus h, if we write it could be f of x0 plus h times f dash x0 plus h squared divided by 2 factorial f double dash x0 plus h cubed by 3 factorial f triple dash x0 and I'm not going to write the entire thing, you know the right. And similarly for the backward difference, we started with a negative h and we saw that the first derivative becomes negative because h was effectively replaced by a negative h. The second order term remains the same. The third term becomes negative and so on. The fourth is positive, the fifth is negative. Now, to obtain the higher order derivative, we have to play around with these equations such that the lower order derivatives term get cancelled out. So what we do is, we simply add these equations. So if you add this, the left hand side is f of x0 plus h plus f of x0 minus h, 2 times f of x0. This guy gets cancelled out, which is good. And we get twice h square divided by 2 factorial, which is again 2. These guys cancel out. Then we would get twice of h to the power 4 divided by 4 factorial. And the fourth derivative of x0, so on. So now we can see that to get the f double dash x0, we can tweak the terms around. So this 2 and 2 factorial gets cancelled out. And you can divide the whole equation by h square to get rid of the h square in front of the derivative term. So if you will write it, it becomes very simply f of x0 plus h minus 2 f of x0 plus f of x0 minus h divided by h square plus so if we divide this particular term by h square this would become twice h square it would actually be negative on this side and 4 factorial f 4 x naught and so on so you see that this is what is the uh, approximative second order derivative And this is the error, or should I say truncation error, to be more precise. And the order here is h square, as dictated by this h square term here. And this is actually called as the central differencing approximation because we are considering both x0 plus h and x0 minus h. Now, to get the forward difference approximation, we have to be restrictive only to the forward side. So, what we do is, we started with x0, we saw what the x0 plus h would be, and we want to see what the x0 plus twice of h would be. So, what I'm trying to say is, so this was our x0, and we started by writing the Taylor series expansion at x0 plus h, and if we want to obtain the higher order derivative, we need more points in our stencil. So, let's focus on x0 plus 2h. 
So if we say we want to know what the f of x dot plus 2h is, remember the Taylor series expansion again. This spacing is 2h. Forget about the x dot plus h and we can simply write 2h f dash x naught plus 2h whole square 2 factorial f double dash x naught plus 2h whole cube 3 factorial f triple dash x naught and so on. And similarly or not similarly actually from before we saw that f of x naught was x naught plus h was this nice expression that we have been dealing with so far. So as I was saying that you have to tweak these equations so that you cancel out the lower order derivative terms and we are only left with the higher order derivative. So we see that there is a 2 here sitting in front of the h f prime x naught. So what we do is we just multiply this whole equation by 2. 2 here, 2 here and everywhere. And then we can simply subtract these equations which gives us on the left hand side and here we have a negative f of x naught these terms cancel out and over here we have so this is 4 times h square by 2 factorial so we have And similarly, there would be 8 minus 2, which is 6 h cubed divided by 3 factorial, f, x naught, and so on. So from here, if you rearrange this equation, you'll get f of x naught plus 2 h minus 2 times f of x naught plus h plus f of x naught divided by h square plus the order of the error here would be h square. Uh, I'm sorry, it would be order of h. And I'm not going to repeat it for the backward difference scheme. So the idea remains the same. So we started with f of x naught or simply x naught and we first write the Taylor series expansion for f of x naught minus h and using these two points we got the first order derivative and if you want to get the second order derivative you have to go further beyond in time or beyond in space so you have to consider f of x naught f of x naught minus h and f of x naught minus 2h and using this so I'll just write here that this is the forward difference method and this is the second derivative of f and similarly using the backward difference method the second derivative of f would be f x naught f of x naught minus f of x naught minus h Speed twice plus f of x naught minus 2h divided by h square plus truncated order p of the order of h. So before we conclude this chapter there is one small thing that you can observe here. So whenever I'm writing these equations so if you consider when I'm writing this particular part here you see that uh, the the pattern that I'm following in writing these terms is from high to the low. What I mean to say is I'm first writing the term which has x0 plus h then x0 and x0 minus h. This would be more clear in here. So for the forward difference I'm starting with x0 plus 2h, x0 plus h and x0 and similarly for the backward difference method. This becomes important when you want to write these derivatives or these uh, 
uh, differencing scheme in a matrix form and you are only having these coefficients. So for instance, the coefficients in the forward difference method are 1, minus 2 and 1 and it's the same for the backward difference method. But you should know and we have to know where these coefficients would actually hit. So the, the 1 would come for the first which is the highest spatial term. The second coefficient would hit with the, the second highest spatial term. So with this we would conclude this lecture here and hopefully you would learn a little bit more about the finite differencing so far. In the next chapter we would start with the uh, with a very basic partial differential equation on, or an ordinary differential equation and we would see how we can use these schemes for getting what is called as the discretized version of these equations. If you have any questions feel free to drop them in the comment below. I'm trying to catch up with every questions that you guys are having so don't be shy to ask questions this is always good. And I'll see you in the next chapter.